Hi everyone, good day, this is Dr. Vaughn and welcome to another lecture in your histology. So for today, we will be discussing about your muscle tissue. So this is going to be your pre-lab discussion for your muscle tissue. So at the end of this video lecture, the students are able to distinguish the three types of your muscle and know the difference in terms of their structure and your function. So let's have an overview again of what's your muscle. So, but before that, we will have a terminologies about your muscle tissue. When we say muscle fiber, that refers to your individual muscle cells. Again, when we say muscle fiber, that refers to your muscle cells. And then we have your sarcolemma, which is your cell membrane of your muscle cells, your psychoplasmic reticulum, or your smooth endoplasmic reticulum, your sar sarcosomes, which refers to your mitochondria, and your sarcoplasm, which refers to your cytoplasm. So be basically speaking, these are synonymous terminologies in your, in your muscle tissue. So your muscle is classified into three types. We all know that we have your skeletal, cardiac, and your smooth muscle. Your muscle cells possesses a contractile filaments containing now your actin and your myosin. And also in terms of their contractions, it could be voluntary for your skeletal muscles or involuntary for your cardiac and smooth muscles. All muscle tissues consist of your elongated cells called your fibers, which refers now to your muscle cells. And then the cytoplasm of muscle cells is called sarcoplasm and the surrounding cell membrane or plasma lemma is called your sarcolemma. So we already reviewed this a while ago. So again, in terms of the types of muscle tissue, we have your skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle. One way of differentiating your skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle is by the presence of your striations. I'm sorry. Your skeletal and cardiac muscle are both striated. So as what you can see in the diagram, there are presence of striations. So later on, we will have a better picture about these striations. And your smooth muscle is non-striated. In, in terms of nervous control, your skeletal is voluntary, while your cardiac and smooth muscles are both involuntary. Again, your skeletal comprised of all, all named voluntary muscles in the body. Example, your gastrocnemius, your latissimus dorsi, and most originate and or insert in your bone. So basically, this is the muscle distribution or your muscle distribution of your skeletal. While your cardiac is limited to the heart, your myocardium, and large blood vessels attached to heart. While your smooth muscle, it is located presence in wall and parenchyma of your visceral organs, walls of your blood vessels, and your skin. Now let's proceed to the individual muscle tissue. First, we will be discussing about your skeletal muscle. So this is a very good picture of your entire skeletal muscle. So first, we have we will identify the most important structures of your skeletal muscle. So we will have the overview of your entire skeletal muscle before we go to the microscopic picture of your skeletal muscle for us to uh, identify the structures correctly. So this is now the entire skeletal muscles. Your entire skeletal muscles are surrounded by a dense irregular connective tissue which is called your epimesium. Again, this is your epimesium which surrounds the entire skeletal muscles. Again, this is dense irregular connective tissue. I know you're already done with the discussion of your connective tissue. Again, your epimesium is a dense irregular connective tissue. From your epimesium, a lens and a thinner irregular connective tissue layer called your perimesium extend inwards and divide the interior of your muscles into smaller bundles of muscle fibers called now your called your fascicles each fascicle is then surrounded by your perimesium so your fascicles here is actually surrounded by your 
perimysium. Again, your perimysium is a connective tissue which envelops your muscle, bundles, or your fascicle. So again, what surrounds the entire muscle? It's your epimysium. What surrounds or envelops your muscle bundles or your fascicles? It is your perimysium. So I hope you're able to identify the difference between the two. Next, let's proceed with your endomysium. A thin layer of reticular connective tissue fibers called now your endomysium invests the individual muscle fiber. So where is your endomysium here? This one. So again, what invests the individual muscle fiber? It's your endomysium. So surrounds the muscle fibers, your endomysium. Again, these are the most important connective tissue that surrounds your muscle fiber. Again, your epimysium, it will surround the entire muscle cell. Your perimysium, it will surround the your muscle bundle or fibers. Then the individual muscle fiber or that surrounds your muscle fiber, it is your endomysium. I hope, I hope that is very clear. Next, it is located in all different connective tissue sheets are your, we have the presence of your blood vessels, we have your vein, we have your capillary, we have your nerves, and also the presence of your nerve are your lymphatics as well as a rich capillary plexus seen in your endomysium. So again, that's the very uh, simple explanation of the different uh, structures that is located in your skeletal muscle. Now let's proceed with the individual muscle fiber. Again, what surrounds your muscle fiber? It is now your endomysium. So these are now the, the, uh, the, the components of your skeletal muscle fiber. So let's see. Your skeletal muscle fibers are long and cylindrical. As what you can see, it is long and cylindrical. And, it is com uh, and each of these muscle fiber is composed of your subunits called your myofibril. So we have a myofibrils in your muscle fiber which extends to the entire length of your muscle fiber. The myofibrils are composed of a smaller myofilaments that forms now the contractile thin, uh, contractile thin protein actin and a thick protein myosin. So we have your thick filament and now your thin filament. So the blue line here that refers to your thick filament while your red line here that refers to your thin filament again what is one important or distinct uh, feature of your muscle fiber is that the nucleus is located peripherally so as what you can see here i'm sorry this one this one is the nucleus it is located peripherally and it is multi-nucleated cells again it is multi-nucleated cells with peripheral nuclei. So as you can see, this muscle fiber will have several uh, nucleus, but the, but the nucleus is located peripherally. So these are the components of your skeletal muscle fiber. Again, under light microscope, or there is a longitudinal section of your muscle fibers that will now show the uh, show the cross striations of your of your skeletal muscle again this is the reason why you can see a lot of striations in your muscle fiber it is because of your light band or your i band and your dark band which is or your a band so where, where is your i band so this is your i band this is now your i band or your light band so this is the lighter blue the darker blue from this part up to this part is now your A band. Again, this is the A band huh? from this one up to this one, the lighter and uh, the darker blue that refers now to the dark band or your A band. Again, under light microscope, you can see the presence of your light band or I band, dark band or your A band. Cross striations corresponds to a transverse striations of your alternating light and dark band. So, this is the reasons why you can see striations of your muscle fiber. Again, we have a better picture to see under light microscope. Your longitudinal section shows now creations of your light band. Again, your light band which represented by your I band, this one, I band. From this 
part up to this part this is now your i band and now your dark band that's why it's called dark band because it's darker so from this area up to this area this is now your a band now let's proceed with the different structures your z disc m line h zone and etc so again under electron microscope you can now identify the presence of your z line your sarcomere your h bond and your m line first let's talk about your z line your z line or your i'm sorry i don't know how to correctly pronounce this term your z bond or your z disc this is now your dark line in which it bisects from your i bond so again this is your i bond and what bisects your i bond is the presence of your z disc or z line so this is now your z disc or z line that bisects your i bond very clear next we have your sarcomere your sarcomere doc what is a sarcomere remember your sarcomere these are repeating units which make up your microfibrils again when we say sarcomere these are repeating units which makes up your myofibril so how can we see or locate your sarcomere it is from the z line to z line so from one z line to another z line that refers now to your sarcomere again that's very clear now how about h bond your h bond or what we term as your handless bond heller bond or your hell bond or your henson's bond these are lighter zone in the center of your a bond so for here in your a bond the lighter zone is actually your your h bond or your h zone so this is now your h bond or your h zone so this is refers to your h zone next what is how, how about your m line your m line is a thin dark bond which bisects now your h bond so again what bisects your h bond it is now your m line i hope that is clear again let's review when we say i bond i bond this is the lighter bond compared to your a bond which is the darker bond then what uh what bisects your i bond it is now your z disc very good your h zone or your h bond this is the lighter zone that is located in your a bond so this is the lighter zone in your a bond and then what bisects now your h zone is the presence of your m line i hope that is very clear so again you just have to review this one to for you to um, be able to understand the structures of your muscle fiber again we have the different types of your skeletal muscle we have your red or your slow twitch muscle or your white or your fast twitch muscle when we say red or slow twitch muscle they contract at a slower rate but capable of continuous contraction they do not fatigue easily and they are richer in blood supply because they are rich in blood supply they have higher contents of your red pigments referring to your myoglobin and your mitochondrial cytochrome so example of these are your long muscles of your back while your white or your fast twitch muscle they contract rapidly but briefly and they fatigue fast and they have a lower myoglobin content therefore fewer mitochondria so example of these are your extra ocular muscles so these are muscles of your eyes so again this is a very good um microscopic picture of your skeletal muscle so this first the upper part or the upper picture this refers now to the longitudinal section of your skeletal muscle again i will repeat ha this is the longitudinal section of your skeletal muscle the lower portion here this part the lower portion this is now the uh, transverse or the cross section of your skeletal muscle actually this is the skeletal muscle of your tongue again let's identify some important structures of your skeletal muscle again there is a presence of your striations what causes these striations is the alternating of your a bond and your i bond your a bond refers to the darker bond and your i bond which refers to the lighter bond so again your a bond and i bond can be seen using now your 
simple microscope or your light microscope. Again, what are the other structures? We have your nucleus, which is located peripherally. Again, it is multinucleated. We can see a lot of cell of nucleus, and it is located peripherally, not in the center, but peripherally. What else? You can see the presence of your endometrium that separates now your individual muscle fiber. Again, this is one muscle fiber, another muscle fiber, and this is another muscle fiber. Next, we have also the presence of your fibroblast in your endometrium. So this is a basic structure. This is the basic um, uh, parts of your uh, longitudinal part of your skeletal muscle. Again, this is the cross section or your transverse section of your skeletal muscles of the tongue. Again, we have, can see connective tissue. The nuclei of your muscle fibers, as what you can see, it is located peripherally. We have your endometrium and the presence of your blood vessels. We have your perimetrium that surrounds the perimetrium that surrounds the muscle bundle. And then we have your myofibrils located in each of your muscle fiber and the presence of your capillaries. Again, this is your muscle fascicle which be surrounded by your perimetrium. We have another diagram here. This is your skeletal muscle tissue. Again, you can see the presence of your striations and your nucleus is located peripherally. Again, the nucleus is located peripherally and there is a presence of a multinucleated, multinucleated located peripherally. Again, another diagram. This is a, as what you can see, again, alternating I bond and A bond and the presence of your muscle nucleus located peripherally. Again, we're able to correctly identify now the important structure of your skeletal muscle. There is a presence of your striations. The nucleus is located peripherally. Again, that's the most important thing for you to identify that it is your skeletal muscle. Now, let's proceed with your cardiac muscle. Again, your cardiac muscle. Again, let's continue. So your cardiac muscles, again, as what you can see, this is now your cardiac muscle. So let's see first the bigger picture or the overview of the structure of your cardiac muscle. So your cardiac muscle fibers are also cylindrical. As what you can see, it is also cylindrical, similar to your skeletal muscle. They are primarily located, again, in terms of the distribution of your cardiac muscle. It is located in the walls and septa of the heart, in the walls of your large vessels attached to your heart, the aorta, and your pulmonary trunk. Similar to your skeletal muscle, your cardiac muscle fibers exhibit a cross striation. So there's also a presence of your cross striations as a result of the regular arrangement of your actin and your myosin filament. Again, somehow, in terms of the structure of your cardiac muscle, it is similar to your skeletal muscle by the presence of your striations. The cardiac muscles develop by joining end-to-end -end through the anchoring cell junctions called now your intercalated disc. So, this intercalated disc is a unique in your cardiac muscle. So, again, intercalated disc is only unique or could only be seen in your cardiac muscle cross chain of cardiac cells at irregular interval and it represents junctional complexes of your muscle cells anchors your myofibrils and it also allows instantaneous spread of your contractile stimulus that is the function of your intercalated discs your cardiac muscle cells exhibit only one or two central nuclei unlike your unlike your skeletal muscle which is multinucleated look multinucleated located peripherally your cardiac muscle there could only be one or two located centrally again that is one important distinguishing factor also of your cardiac muscle um and also it is so, uh, in terms of their and uh, your cardiac muscle is also shorter than your skeletal muscles and as what you can see they exhibit 
branching. So unlike your skeletal muscle, you cannot see any branching. However, in your cardiac muscle, there is a presence of your branching. So this is now the basic components of your cardiac muscle fiber. Again, as what you can see, there is still the presence of your thick filament and your thin filament and alternating I band and A band because that makes now the presence of your striation. So somehow similar to your skeletal muscle. Now let's see uh, this another diagram. Again, this picture above, this part, this is the longitudinal part of your cardiac muscle. While the, uh, while the bottom picture, this is actually a, a cross section of your cardiac muscle. Now let's identify the most important feature of your cardiac muscle. Again, as what we can see, there is a presence of your nucleus located centrally. So again, the nucleus is located centrally. There's also a presence of your cross striations. Again, central nucleus and the presence of your intercalated disc so this is where you can see your intercalated disc this part as what you can see again highly distinguishing and characteristic features of your cardiac muscle fibers are the presence of your intercalated disc so again this part this part this part this part these are your intercalated discs what else there's a presence of your branching cardiac fibers so as what you can see there's a presence of a branching cardiac uh, fibers and then we have the presence of your intercalated and your branching cardiac fiber again that's the most important distinguishing feature of your cardiac muscle in a cross section or transverse section there's a presence of your capillary centrally located nucleus the presence of your myofibrils and the presence of your endometrium. So these are the basic uh, components of your cardiac muscle. Again, so what you can see, let's identify a centrally located nucleus. This is centrally located nucleus and the presence of your intercalated disc, which are a distinct feature of your cardiac muscle. And we can see also that there is branching of your cardiac muscle. Now we were able to correctly um, differentiate now your skeletal and your cardiac muscle. Now let's proceed with your smooth muscle. So this is now your smooth muscle. Your smooth muscle appears as elongated and individual fibers with a fusiform shape. So what you can see, it is tapering. So this is a fusiform shapes of slender bundles called now your fascicles. The muscle fibers are also small and contain a single central nucleus. Again, unlike your skeletal, which is located peripherally in terms of the nucleus, your smooth muscle nucleus is located centrally. There's only a single central nucleus that could be seen. So this is again, this is the longitudinal part and the lower part, this is now the transverse section. So again, longitudinal section of your smooth muscle. So as what you can see, there are spindle shaped cells with tapered ends. So spindle shape, they look like a spindle shape with a tapered ends. The cytoplasm or sarcoplasm of each of your muscle fiber is stains dark. So as what you can see, the cytoplasm stains dark. So this is one muscle fiber or mu muscle smooth muscle, another one smooth muscle. So again, Individual smooth muscle fibers can, can also contain your contractile actin and your myosin filament. However, they are not arranged in the regular cross striated patterns. Instead, actin and your myosin is, is they course obliquely throughout the cell in the form of a lattice network that crisscrosses now your sarcoplasm. As a result of irregular distribution of your contractile elements, these muscle fibers appear smooth or non-striated. Again, the reason why there's no striations that we cannot see in your smooth muscle because of the irregular distribution of your contractile elements. Therefore, 
it appears smooth or non-striated. So that's the reason why your smooth muscle is non-striated. So again, these are the basic part, nucleus and the different connective tissue. So you're able to identify this one already. Again, as what you can see, your spindle-shaped cells, they are fusiform shape and there's a tapering at the end and you have a single uh, centrally located nucleus. So again, as what you can see, cigar-shaped nucleus. So this is the basic structure of your smooth muscle. And as what you can see, there are no presence of your striations. So now let's have a comparison of your skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle. This is already a summary of the things that we discuss in terms of the distinct features of your skeletal versus your cardiac versus your smooth muscle. So again, these are the different properties that we can differentiate to your skeletal, cardiac, and your smooth muscle. In terms of the shape and the size of the cell, your skeletal muscle, again, we have seen it is long and cylindrical. Your cardiac muscle, blunt-ended, and there is a presence of branching. Your smooth muscle, we have it is short and spindle-shaped. In terms of the number and location of the nucleus, we have seen that your skeletal muscle is multinucleated, but it is located peripherally. Your cardiac muscle, we can see one or two but it is centrally located. Your smooth muscle, there's only single nucleus, which is also located centrally. In terms of the striations, your skeletal muscle has striations, including your cardiac muscle, but your smooth muscle does not have any striations because of the, ano nga, what, what is the reason why there are no striations in smooth muscle? Because of the irregular distribution of your, of your, Fibrils. Gap junction present, your skeletal muscle, no, there's no presence of gap junctions, while in your cardiac and your smooth muscle, there is a presence of your, uh, there's a presence of your gap junctions in your intercalated discs and in your sarcolemma known as your nexus. Sarcomere presence, again, what is a sarcomere? These are repeating units of your, from Z-line to Z-line, which uh, your sarcomere is the is the one that is will make up your myofibril. So um, repeating units. So your sarcomere is a repeating unit. So skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, there is a presence of your sarcomere, while your smooth muscle, there are no presence of your sarcomere. In terms of the voluntary contractions or nervous control, your skeletal and card your skeletal is voluntarily while your cardiac and smooth muscle are both involuntary. Distinct features, now these are the most important thing for us to identify these different structures. Distinct characteristic for skeletal muscle, it, the nuclei is located peripherally. Cardiac muscle, there are intercalated discs. And your smooth muscle, there are lack of striation. So again, this is the most important characteristics for us to differentiate your skeletal versus your cardiac versus your smooth muscle. Again, so what we can see in this diagram, these are both in longitudinal view of your skeletal, cardiac, and your smooth. As what you can see, your skeletal, multinucleated, located peripherally. This is the one individual muscle fibers and it is non-branching. Your cardiac muscle, we can see the presence of your intercalated discs and a centrally located nucleus. And then there's also presence of your striations both in your skeletal and your cardiac muscle. And lastly, your smooth muscle fibers, you can see a cigar-shaped nucleus and a spindle-shaped muscle fiber and a centrally located nucleus. That is how we differentiate now your skeletal, your skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle in terms of their structure. I guess that ends my lecture video. I hope you learned something in terms of identifying this different muscle tissue. I want you to practice and see a lot of pictures for you to be able to correctly identify this different muscle tissue. So we will have a worksheet. Kindly submit that to your assigned 
preceptor. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to PM me through my Telegram account or Messenger account. Thank you everyone. God bless you.